Hello to all SOLIDWORKS and 3D Experience Works users and welcome to the 32nd SOLIDWORKS Power User Challenge. This is Alim Vargatu from Javelin Technologies uh, Trimac company. I would like to give credit for the inspiration for this challenge to a mysterious fo forum user, R RQ. Um, he asked in the API section how he can place points equidistantly on a hemisphere in order to use it for, for other reasons. Now, we're not going to use just API in this challenge. You can use SOLIDWORKS, you can use 3D experience applications, you can use a combination of both. Uh, you can also use macros. So, for example, in this proof of concept that I'm going to share with you, uh, I use SOLIDWORKS and also I use a, a macro to, to get the job done, to get all these uh, reference points on, on the hemisphere. So I'll just give you an idea about what I did and also what uh, is expected from you in order to win this challenge. First, um, let's start with building um, a hemisphere. Notice in my case, uh, it's a thin wall. You don't have to do thin wall. You can do it uh, solid. Uh, this, is, this is the starting body. Now what you need to be able to control here, and it's going to give you extra points, is the diameter of the sphere. So if I can change the diameter of the sphere and the whole part uh, update parametrically or uh, with a very small manual effort, you, you get extra points, right? So I should be able to change the diameter of the sphere. Uh, and then in my, in my mind, the only way to, to place these points approximately equal uh, distance on the sphere was to actually uh, flatten the, uh, the spherical surface, the hemisphere, um, use the fill pattern to apply uh, holes or actually uh, hole-like cutouts and then capture the uh, circumferences of, of all those holes, wrap it back on the sphere and then put uh, reference points in the center of all those wrapped entities. So let's, let's take a look at what I did here. Um, I made a copy of the sphere just because the original one I would require some uh, some splitting for the flatten surface command. So I run the surface flatten. Uh, the result is it's uh, is this, and uh, I know this is an approximation, right? It's it's about FEA. Uh, feel free to crank up the uh, uh, the, the options inside the surface flatten. Uh, and then I did the thicken command for that body. So you can see uh, I'm getting in here. The reason for that is because I wanted to put holes in it. So um, I needed a little sketch just to give me the direction and then I run the fill pattern and you can see um, I put holes. Now one thing that's important also is to be able to control the uh, the spacing between the holes and also the distribution. So that's why I, uh, I chose this option. Uh, and then I simply created a sketch that capture all these holes. It's very simple just for, for those of you who don't know how to do it. You simply start a sketch on this face, uh, make sure nothing is selected, go to convert entities, use the option to convert only the inner loops, select the face and select all inner. So this is one way to capture the geometry that's supposed to be wrapped around the sphere. And you can see the result if I'm hiding those relations. You can see I, I just have um, little circles all over the place. So I did that and then it's just a matter of running the wrap command to actually wrap the resulting sketch on the sphere. Okay, uh, Allow me to hide the bodies that I, I no longer need. And uh, after that I simply run a macro that allow me to put a reference point and I'm thinking maybe we, we can think about other things that you might want to place there, maybe a coordinate system uh, maybe a sketch point, right? So I, in this case, I use the, the reference point. I selected one of these faces. Let's make sure I'm selecting the, the right one because I have a feeling there are multiple... Um, there are multiple entities in here. There you go. So on this face, put a point right in the center. And you have to repeat this on all these faces. And you might say, okay, that's going to take forever. Well, just be aware that there, there are macros available. Um, I found one right on the SOLIDWORKS forum. And a quick way to do that, 
uh, is notice here I have just a, a surface zero thickness. The reason for that is because it makes it very easy to select all these faces. And there are a couple of ways to do that. Uh, one way is to turn on the filter. So uh, press F5, make sure that you have the face as your selection, and then simply press Ctrl A. That selects all the entities that are faces. And then Ctrl Select to remove the big face. And what you have left are these faces where you're going to apply the reference point and then simply run the macro one point is going to be placed pretty much everywhere in uh, in that case so that's that's the reason why i have this extra copy of uh, of the surface and now if i'm showing you the solid body notice it has points that try to be equally spaced uh, on the sphere as as much as possible i'm looking forward to see your uh, other techniques that you're going to use here obviously if you have uh, a macro that can do the whole job that's even better uh, one thing about this technique it would work with any type of surface not just spherical surfaces so uh, the more general you make your solution uh, more points you're going to get thank you very much